Hey guys, and welcome back to Downhill Night. So we are on Route 4 of the second ending, so let's just jump right back in. The usual overwhelming lunchtime rush came to an end, and it was almost time for my afternoon break. Whew, finally I can catch my breath. It's just about to relax when... Go here before you take a break, shopkeeper says before he hands me a delivery box and a map. Written on the map is Kitsukino Ridge. Kitsukino? Is that a Kitsukino Mountain? That's right. I've got a friend who lives there. Deliver some soba there. Wow, you've actually got friends? Get moving! Y yes sir! Um, I've been clicking for like 10 times. Okay. The shopkeeper pushes me out the door. I head for the place marked on the map. In order to reach my destination at the foot of Kitsukino, I'll have to go over the ridge. I drive my moped along unfamiliar roads. Why is it so hot here? It's really hot. Normally there's a cool breeze in the mountains this time of year, but there's something different about this ridge. The sun beats down upon me and I can feel its rays penetrating my skin. Heat waves shimmer in the air above the asphalt up ahead. This isn't normal mountain weather. It doesn't feel like Japan. It feels like some tropical island resort or something. I'm going to get heat stroke if I stay here too long. Apparently that's the kind of place Kitsukino Ridge is. I wonder what the shopkeeper's friend is like anyway. I try to think about something else to take my mind off the sweltering heat. And then suddenly... I don't even have time to think when a car suddenly flies out of the corner up ahead. It straddles the center line as it drifts through the corner, then races right toward me. It just barely misses me by a few inches. Somehow I was able to avoid becoming roadkill. I lean my moped sharply to one side like a motorcycle racer, my knee almost scraping the ground. I'm able to keep my balance and stop safely. I'm soaked with sweat, and not just because of the heat, my hands are shaking. That was a close one. That wasn't comical and hilarious like when Michi hit me. I thought I was dead meat for sure. Just then I hear the car stop nearby. What was that? I'm so sorry, are you okay? I was just getting some practice and I totally forgot it was still daytime. And then your moped suddenly appeared in front of me. You almost got flattened. <laughs> laughing at me. Hearing her mocking laughter makes me fly into a rage. Hey, I thought you were gonna hit me. That's nothing to laugh about. I'm really sorry. It's just that Hachime is such a boring driver. So I decided to stretch my legs and I guess I accidentally stepped in the gas. Before I knew it, it was too late. It was just a little accident. Are you okay? She stepped on the gas from the passenger seat. I must be hearing things. I'm not hurt, but... But what's the big deal? Oh, my name is Yuna, Yuna Kotosato. Nice to meet you. What's the big deal? Shouldn't I be the one to decide if it's a big deal or not? With her attitude, I'm not surprised she stepped on the gas from the passenger seat. Just then, I noticed a man standing behind her. Oh, that's Hajime, he's my big brother. I guess, but his personality is totally the opposite of mine. He's all gloomy and emo. He's the world's biggest loser, too. How could she say stuff like that about her own brother? Or maybe she's saying it because he's her brother. If a girl ever said something like that to me, I'd be emo for the rest of my life, too. If I don't say something soon, she'll probably stand there talking to me all day. Before she can interrupt me, I quickly try to brush her off and escape. I don't care what kind of freaky family issues you have, I'm in a hurry. I don't even want to talk to you. All I want is for both of you to apologize for almost killing me today. Fine, come on big bro! Yuna is surprisingly obedient as she and her brother line up in front of me and bow. Sorry. Come on, forgive him, okay? What? what's okay about it? Is that the kind of thing you say to someone you almost killed? Give me a break! What? But we went to all the trouble of apologizing and everything! All the trouble of apologizing? 
Man, I don't know where to start. You didn't even apologize yourself. What kind of apology is that supposed to be? Huh? Is that the kind of attitude you cop when a girl apologizes to you? What kind of wuss are you? Wh what? Oh, what's this? Are you getting angry because I hit the bullseye with that remark? Knock it off! What a pest! Isn't that good enough for you? It is not. I guess there's no other choice now. If this is the way it's going to be, then we'll have to battle. That's fine with me. W wait a minute. Why do I have no other choice than a battle? I can't even keep up with any of this. Next Sunday night, I'll have a downhill battle here on Keith. Er, yeah, we'll have a downhill battle here on Keith's Kino Ridge. Hey now, how come you almost killed me, and then not only do you not apologize, but then you challenge me to a battle? Quick complaining. If I say we're going to battle, then we're going to battle. Again? That's not what I. B -b -b Wait! You'd better polish up that trashy moped of yours. Because we're going to trash it again! What? My moped? Hey! Wait! Hey! She expects me to battle a car on my little moped? What's she thinking? I run after the car screaming, but I- But sh they can't hear me. The car vanishes in the distance. Well, crap. I accepted their challenge. Why does it always have to be a battle anyway? So, just as always, I let them get under my skin, and I end up going right along with their battle, on my moped. Had a ridge I've never driven on before, for the stupidest reason imaginable. I continue to think about the battle as I head towards my destination. Although I ran into some trouble along the way, I managed to arrive safely. Is this the place? The place is filled with car parts, and nobody seems to be around. I cautiously step inside. Excuse me. I call out, but there's no reply. I continue to walk further in, and then... My eyes can't adjust from being out in the bright daylight to entering a dimly lit garage. My legs start to shake. With a painful thud, I fall on my ass. Fortunately, I manage not to drop the delivery box. Ow! I brush the dirt off my clothes and stand up. Nothing good has happened to me since I came to this ridge. Is it cursed or something? I should probably finish up my business here as quickly as possible so I can leave. And then... Hey! Who the hell are you, a burglar? What? Me a burglar? What's going on? This is serious business. Here, this is yours! I show him the delivery box. I didn't order anything like that. Now get over here so I can call the cops! He grabs my- or he grabs me by the collar and drags me inside. Why is this happening to me? Let's see, what's the phone number for the police? I've been constantly pestered by thieves lately. It's been a lot of work gathering all these car parts, too. Wait, you've got the wrong idea. I'm just a delivery boy, I swear. I never ordered anything, you rotten burglar. No, wait, my boss took- uh, Togakushi told me to come. It's the truth, I didn't ask him why, but he said that you're an old friend, so I should bring this to you. Huh? Don't tell me you're from Toga- or from Togachi's place, are you? What? Togachi? Yeah, we're buddies from way back. Sorry about that, I guess I got carried away. You thought I was a burglar? You got me on that one. <laughs> He's the one who got me, though. All I did was come here to deliver his noodles and he beats me up for call er, and calls me a burglar. I'm the manager of this garage, of course I'm also the only one who works here. Anyway, what do you deliver for me? Oh yeah, I almost forgot. Um, here you go. I hand over the soba. I ran into a lot of trouble along the way, but mission accomplished. <laughs> hey, did you really come all the way uh, all this way to do that? Huh? The garage manager looks at the bowl of noodles, and not only have the noodles absorbed all of the broth and gone soggy, but everything else, or everything's all shaken up and mixed together. Gah! <laughs> well, I did almost get hit by a car on the way here. There's no way the noodles would survive that. I also fell down and got dragged through a garage. In fact, 
It'd be a miracle for the noodles to survive intact. Naturally, the delivery box is spl uh, spattered with broth. S sorry, there's a long story behind that. <laughs> don't worry about it. He's just evening up an old debt. What did I come all the way here for then? I'm really sorry. Hmm? Oh, I don't don't worry about it. It's the thought that counts. Now give my regards to Togachi. Tell him the noodles were great. Thank you. I'll be sure to tell him that. Anyway, I should be going now. Well I'll give you a lift out front. I need to tune up this machine anyway. Do you tune or do you tune up cars and stuff here? Yup. That, or there have been a lot of street races around here lately, so I've been pretty busy. There have been quite a few guys who were a little too overconfident to their skills, and really wrecked up their cars pretty bad, too. Yeah, they drive like maniacs sometimes. I think back on everyone I've met lately. Are you a street racer, too? N no way. I don't even have a driver's license. What? Really? The girls are going crazy for street racers nowadays, though. Don't you like girls, son? He lets out a bellowing laugh. The truth hurts sometimes. Even young girls nowadays are forgetting all about guys so they can race, too. Y yeah I've seen a lot of them lately. Other than Mieta, all the people I've battled have been girls. Well, it's your choice if you want to drive or not. Say hi to Togachi for me, okay? Sure, I'll do that, thanks. I leave the garage. Man, what a day. I drive my moped over the ridge, almost get hit by a car, get mistaken for a burglar, and didn't deliver the noodles. Luck mustn't be on my side right now. But I'm glad I was a decent person at or he was a decent person at least. Fortunately, no other disasters happen on my way back. I'm back. Although I was really late, I safely arrived back at the shop. I need to tell the shopkeeper what the garage manager said. They'll probably be pretty happy. Oh, boss, the garage manager wanted me to say... You ruined the soba, didn't you? Yikes! H how did you... He just called a, or he just called me a little while ago. Can't you even make a simple delivery without screwing it up? That bastard, he ratted me out. I... I'm really sorry. Well, that's okay. Huh? Normally he'd be... Or I'd be tasting the brutal impact of his iron fist right now. I'm really, really sorry. He's a lot kinder than usual today. I don't know what he's talked about on the phone. But it must have been something nice. He seems to be in a pretty good mood. But still, that guy ratted me out. I should have expected the shopkeeper's friends would have a mental disorder or two. The rest of the day passes, with in er, passes without incident, and I get ready to go home. Time to go home, I guess. I work hard all day, and I feel kind of refreshed. I wonder if this is what they call ambition. I stretch out before I get on my moped. Hmm? I can't shake the feeling I'm forgetting about something. Ugh! That's right, I forgot all about the battle! What should I do? I'm gonna tell Michi about it. I guess I should let Michi know about this. My cheerful spirits sink like a stone as I head towards Michi's house. On my way home from work, a single wooden door stands before me. F uh, to me right now, this ordinary sliding door feels heavier than a boulder. But I'm the one who took on this battle. I need to tell Michi so we can practice on the, uh, on the other ridge. But I don't have any other way of contacting Michi personally. The only way I can talk to her is to meet her at her house. I can't back out now. But I still, I still feel like I want to run away. Aw, crap. Whatever happens, happens. I put my hand on the door and make my move. The house is silent. I steal my nerves and shout, Excuse me, Mr. Konosaki! There's no response. The door is unlocked, so someone must be in the house. It's me, Shodaichi from Nihachi. Suddenly, Huh! Ah! Something comes flying at me from the next room. It misses me by mere inches and shatters the glass in the sliding door. The object lands up by my feet. It's a large, heavy coffee mug. I'd be a goner if that thing hit me. Go away! Um, just 
Get out of here, you monster! Uh, how's your hernia? I keep my voice calm, trying not to make him any angrier. Shut up, you idiot! My stomach might hurt, but my heart hurts worse. I carefully choose my words. Is Michi here? She ain't here! Where did she... I said she ain't here! Uh, are you okay? I know you're in pain, so you must want her here to, or want her to be here with you. She's gonna be gone for a while, no leave. His voice was shaky as he spoke. I don't know what's going on, but I know something's up. Alright, sorry to bother you. It probably wouldn't be a good idea to make Michi's dad any angrier than he already is. So I decide to leave. He must really be in shock after Michi's awkward explanation. But what am I going to do now? I'm totally clueless. Let's see. Uh, we can go practice by myself. I guess I'll practice on my own. My moped is almost out of gasoline. I have barely enough for one round trip. I repeatedly race up and down the ridge. That's all I can do right now. I have to trust in Michi to come back and put in a little effort myself. I chant silently to myself as I break carefully. After this hairpin curve is a series of loose corners, followed by a long straightaway. Alright. You know, I never noticed this before, but apparently I've got a pretty good memory. Only af or after only a few tries, I've pretty much memorized the entire course layout. You know, I just might be able to pull this one off. Everyone has a special talent they're better at than everyone else. Maybe my memory is my talent. Let's see, next is... Suddenly a ball of light and shadow blazed past my side. Or at least that's what it looked like, since, I, or since it was going so fast. All that remains is the sound of its engine. It was a dark colored car, I think. What was that all about? A ball of light and shadow was headed towards the foot of the mountain. I wonder when it showed up anyway. There might be a secret hidden, or hidden at the top of the mountain. I put my moped into high gear. When I arrived at the top, I thought it was just a wild goose chase. Just then, I was surrounded by lights. The headlights of a large group of cars. There was at least a couple dozen cars. I see a familiar face in the crowd. What's you, show? What are you doing here? What? Didn't you come to see it too? What? Isn't it obvious? The battle! Oh, there they are! And then I hear, or I hear a familiar voice. What's this? Well, look who it is! Did you come here to do some scouting? Huh. Well, keep your eyes wide open! There's no way you can beat us on your moped anyway! It was Yuna and her brother, on their way to face their opponent. The crowd goes wild. The S14 spoiler lights up or lights up guard uh, garishly. Yuna returns after easily winning her battle, cackling like an imp. Hey, hey! Did you see that? Yeah, did you see it? Yeah. <laughs> I hope you took notes! She spits out her provoking words, and then the S-14 drives off. I stand dumbfounded, the heat of the battle still in the air. I stare into the darkness long after the S-14 disappeared. A uh, show? What was that about? I ignore Mieta and go home. The night air was still hot and muggy. On the way home, I tell Mieta about, about my battle with Yuna and her brother. Or rather, Mieta kept pestering me until I told him. Ooh, what are you going to do about the battle tomorrow? I haven't seen Michi around lately either. You're not going to run away, are you? Mieta's words echo through my heart. Will I run away or will I stay and fight? If I run away, who knows what that girl will say about me? 
but if I stay and fight, and my other personal or er, personality appears, I don't think I can control myself. What should I do? Mieta holds his breath as he as he waits for my reply. But in the end, I had no reply. I push Mieta away and collapse into bed. What should I do? I rub my eyes and open the door. Apparently, I had drifted off to sleep. As I open my or as I open the door, my hazy eyes open wide. But this is all the time that I have for this episode, so if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!